Um, and all my projects come from questions I have. And my questions became a lot more personal after I lost someone that I loved. Um, her name was Joan, and she was a mother to me for 15 years. She was the one who encouraged me to pursue my creative dreams when I was 18. And her death was sudden and really unexpected, and there were still so many things that she wanted to do. And uh, I spent a long time um, full of grief and depression. And with time, I felt gratitude for the time we had together. And eventually, I found clarity in my life by thinking about death so much. But I, uh, I struggled to maintain this perspective. You know, I think it's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day and forget what really matters to you. So I wanted a daily reminder, and I wanted to know what was important to the people around me. So after getting permission from the property owner, my neighbors, uh, the neighborhood association, I made this uh, homemade stencil that said, before I die, I want to. Uh, and with help from old and new friends, I painted the side of this crumbling house with chalkboard paint and stenciled it with this prompt so that anyone walking by could pick up a piece of chalk, reflect on their lives, and share their personal aspirations in public space. Uh, again, it was all an experiment, and I didn't know what to expect, but I thought, well, uh, because it was cheap to make, it's no big deal if it doesn't work out. Well, by the next day, the wall was entirely filled out, and it kept growing, and this neglected space became a constructive one, and people's responses made me laugh out loud and cry, and they consoled me during some of my toughest times. You know, I understood my neighbors in new and enlightening ways, and I think most importantly to me, uh, I saw that I'm not alone as I'm trying to make sense of my life. The neighbors introduced themselves in front of the wall while reading through the day's responses, and people who uh, ordinarily had little to do with one another began taking care of it. Um, and the grandmother who lives across the street told me, you know, people are around all the time now. The block is safer. Now, the wall in New Orleans was up for seven months in 2011, and uh, it ended for the happiest of reasons. A new owner bought the property, and the house became a home again. Um, but that wasn't the end of the project. I uh, posted a few photos online, and it spread. And my inbox blew up with uh, hundreds of messages from people around the world who wanted to make a wall with their community. So I created a website with tons of resources. Uh, and now, three years later, thanks to passionate people who have spearheaded their own walls, there are now over 500 Before I Die walls uh, in over 70 countries and stenciled in over 35 languages. Um, yeah. And it has been one of the greatest experiences in my life to see this tiny experiment uh, in my neighborhood grow into this global project. Uh, and I'd like to share a few photos of these walls around the world and some things that people wrote on them. Before I die, I want to organize 1,000 exhibitions. Before I die, I want to become a real businesswoman. Before I die, I want to be accepted by my parents. Before I die, I want to be a stripper and a nun at the same time. <laughs> Before I die, I want to master the trumpet. Before I die, I want to see where my grandma grew up. Before I die, I want to hold her one more time. Before I die, I want to stop being afraid. These public walls are like an honest mess. You know, they're an honest mess of the longing and pain and, and joy and insecurity and gratitude and fear and wonder that you find in every neighborhood. You know, everyone is going through challenges in their life, and there's great comfort in knowing that you're not alone. But uh, it's easy to forget this because there are a lot of barriers to opening up. And uh, while those barriers remain, it's easy to become impersonal um, and forget the humanity in the people around us and become even adversarial. 